When we remember a time, we remember moments. A kaleidoscope of the sights, the sounds, the emotions that remind us of the way we were. Our world. It's about time. Here are Linda Ellerby and Ray Gandolf. For the next hour, think of your television set as a time machine. But don't call the other passengers fellow travelers. Where we're going tonight, those are fighting words. Welcome to our world. Last month, on November 4th, 1952, we elected Dwight Eisenhower president. Next month, on January 20th, 1953, we will swear him in. Those are our boundaries. Our story is what happened in the meantime. And that is a winter's tale about fear and frustration in the American way. Call it Red, White, and the Blues. Begin in Korea. A white Christmas spent fighting the Red Peril is enough to give anybody the blues. The winter of 52 was an especially frustrating time for Americans fighting the war in Korea. They were containing communist aggression, not aggression against their country, but against a place some of them had never heard of before and didn't much like when they got there. They had been overrun once by the North Koreans, once by the Chinese, and in between they had chased the enemy all the way to the Chinese border. Now they're sort of nailed down in the middle of the country. Truce talks have been going on and off for a year and a half. The fighting has been going on for two and a half years in broiling heat and sub-zero cold. And now it's December, 1952. December 52 was cold in Korea. And that's when it snowed and it was very cold. A patrol had to go out every night. That was the worst thing. Go out and hit them, but take no property. It was frustrating. A lot of boys died. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Hi there, everybody. This is Air Force Sergeant Fred Grimes once again saying welcome once more to Hot Off the Record Press. I used to walk with you along the avenue. Our hearts were carefree. And Nothing was carefree or gay in Korea that winter. There was no ceasefire. There were no major military offensives. There were only soldiers continuing to fight for and die by inches. Casualties of a frustrating war they could lose but were not winning. The war was stalled because the peace talks were, again. This time, they'd fallen apart over the POW question. There was to be an exchange. However, nearly half the prisoners being held in the South said they didn't want to return to the North. The communists said they had to. America said they didn't. Stalemate. Hello, war. Goodbye, peace. They were not ready for uh, a peace treaty. The war was stalemated. It was a very difficult war. It was a war that... I guess by then we realized uh, we couldn't win. Correspondent Lou Chiaffi covered the war for CBS News out of their Tokyo bureau. Most of the time we spent in Korea, our tour of duty was anywhere from eight to ten weeks, uh, sometimes longer, depending on the story. And it was, again, the, the same thing, the, the battle for the hills. And it had been a big issue in the presidential election. General Dwight Eisenhower, war hero turned politician, had promised that if elected, he would go to Korea. In November he was, in December he did. His son, Major John Eisenhower, was already there. I uh, volunteered to go to Korea. So Dad very naturally uh, was being rather generous to let me be in an infantry unit in Korea because the impact on him if I was captured would be terrible. So I just said, all right, well, I won't get captured. I'll can't guarantee I won't get killed, but I won't get captured. The GIs really believed that Eisenhower was going to bring them home by Christmas. Of course, he didn't, but they did get home soon after that. When he came over, uh, you know, the word got out that he's going to uh, end it, you know, with dignity, with pride. Marine Corporal Robert Modica, of Easy Company, 7th Marine Regiment. 
He recalls the cosmetic consequences of Eisenhower's visit to his unit. They picked, uh, you know, the best-looking representative of a marine image that had to be at least six feet tall. That would represent a marine honor guard. The best-looking, tallest guys got picked for that. They also got to wear clean clothes, which was... and take a bath, which was another event. Eisenhower left Korea and said that there was no simple formula for victory. For our allies and for us, it had become a frustrating war of attrition. The War of the Hills, uh, the war for Old Baldy. Uh, they called it Old Baldy because they'd fought back and forth and taken it and retaken it so many times. It had been bombarded so much, there was nothing on it. I was 22 when I was drafted, and I was 23 when I was in Korea. The next thing I knew was sitting on top of Heartbreak Ridge. For a young Army Corporal James Robinson, Heartbreak Ridge lived up to its name. I'd just been up there one week, and uh, a patrol got shot up pretty bad that night. I was on Heartbreak Ridge 33 days. As the third Christmas of the Korean War grew near, nobody was gaining, nobody losing. The fighting went back and forth in the bitter cold both sides seeking always to capture or retain the frozen high ground. Porkchop Hill, Vegas, Carson, Reno. Bob Modica's Marine unit was on Reno. Serial Ricky, uh, tough guy from Chicago, like a brother. He was a machine gun squad leader by now. One night, the Chinese overran Reno. One of his guns, the barrel burnt out. A round came in and hit him in the back of the head. And he died of wounds. For those who receive the bodies of sons and husbands, Christmas is the cruelest of seasons. There's somebody I'm longing to see. I hope that he turns out For the living in Korea that Christmas, there was little to celebrate save their survival. That was enough. I spent Christmas uh, in Korea. Not a very happy Christmas. You try to make it as happy as you can. For the, you know, the religious people, the believers, if you will, the good Catholics and so on, it was uh, a great comfort to have uh, the Cardinal come and visit as he came all the time. And Billy Graham also, for those, uh, the Protestants and so on. Everywhere we would go, you would find, that's, they make some kind of an effort uh, to get something Christmassy, if you wish. Uh, uh, so a lot of the things they had hanging in their tents was sent by their families from home. Or trying in an effort to give them a little feeling of uh, being with family in uh, Korea. They would dress up tanks, they would make draw pictures and green paint on tanks with a Christmas tree and so on. The USO was active in the area. The main thing for the GIs and, and the USO and Baba, all of it was a little bit of home. There was a flash of uh, feminine leg, uh, a beautiful blonde hair, uh, a not so funny comedian, but it was all kind of let the war end for this brief period. Let me get a, take a good look at home. Let me realize and remember what it was all like. And it's uh, a respite from fighting. <laughs>